Hello. Can you please uh, give us your name, your last name, uh, date of birth, where you're from? My name is Maor Moravia. I was born on July 9, 1986 in Jerusalem. I live in Kfaraza with my wife and two children for the past five years. Could you take us back to the morning of October 7th? Where were you? What woke you up? On Saturday, 6 30, 40 in the morning, we were waking up by uh, the rocket alert. So we ran to the sheltered uh, room, to the protected room. Me, my wife, and my, my son. The protected room is my daughter's room, so she was there sleeping. We ran inside. Uh, we waited to hear the bombs falling. After we heard them falling, we went outside. I uh, went to the porch to see what happened. I went kept where, please? to the porch. I went to see what happened, and <clears throat> uh, I started hearing gunshots from assault rifles all over, from every direction. So I immediately knew something <clears throat> really weird and unusual is happening, and. Uh, I decided to tell my wife and uh, kids to go back to the room. I locked all the doors, all the windows. And after a few more minutes, we received a, a, text message, a text message from the village administration that there are terrorists inside the kibbutz and we should lock all the doors. And then the very long marathon began. We went inside the protected room. We closed the door. We can't lock it. We can't lock it from the inside. So. You just can hold the knob or put some stuff, furniture, but we don't have a real way to lock it. And the, my, my kids are, are 12 and 8, so they have their phones and they're texting with their friends. And very early on, they started telling me, Dad, Dad, my friend says her grandmother, her grandmother is dead. So. I said, no, no, it's, it's, it's not true. Don't worry, it's okay. It's being take, taken care of. After maybe an hour or so inside the, the protected room, I must say it was, it's the beginning, it's the end of the summer, so it's still very hot, hot outside. I turned off the air conditioning, the TV, the electricity. I, we, we sat there in the dark, it was very hot, we were sweating. And my son starts screaming, Dad, your friend Ophir Lipstein is dead. And I felt my world just collapsing. Uh, Who was Ophir? Ophir is the head of the regional council, is the chairman of the regional council, all the villages around. Uh, he lives in, the, in our kibbutz, in Kfar Aza. Uh, he was a great man, a great leader. And he went outside and tried to fight with the terrorists, and uh, he was shot. He was a very brave man. And then houses started, you know, they started burning houses, my kids' friends' houses. And we heard the, through text messages that the terrorists are also in Zderot, in other villages. And we were all alone, nobody came to help us. We didn't know what, what was going on outside. We heard gunshots, we heard people running, you know, the terrorists running in the streets. And it was just, terrible thing because you can't do anything, you can't help anyone, you can't even help your own family. You know, the, the first thing you might think, okay, I'll take the phones from the kids, I, I'll leave them, you know, we wrap them in cotton so they wouldn't know anything, but we, we totally lost control. I was just sitting next to, the, next to the door, in front of the door with my pistol in my hand and I had so many thoughts about what to do, should I fight with them if they come, should I let them, you know, I surrender and maybe they'll spare my wife and kids, not me. You know, there were all kinds of thoughts in my head. And the hours passed by, we couldn't breathe. And they finally got to our street, uh, to the first house. It's 
about three houses from us. They went inside, it was about 2 p.m. And the family there with babies, they were holding the knob and they were fighting with the terrorists for about two or three hours. With, they tried to open the knob, they were holding the knob and they were texting us, help us, help us, send us help. They were trying to open the door, they had babies. And it was, you know, after they, they would finish them, they would move to the next house, the next house, and then it's us. And it was stressful. We heard them walking on our garden, you know, we heard them knocking on windows. They, they were breaking to more houses, they were breaking the windows. And we, all, the, all this time we heard them on the next street, going from house to house. They, they murdered elderly people, they murdered families. We still didn't know they were kidnapping people. We had no idea what was going on. As I said, the TV was off. We were sitting, you know, in silence. My children were were, lie, were hiding under the bed. Yeah. We still didn't know exactly what was going on. We were so we were in the dark. Uh, the, the cellular network went down, so we couldn't call anyone. All we had is the WhatsApp. And when the electricity f went out, we also lost all connection to outside. It, we didn't have any connection for a very long time, so we couldn't even say if we are alive or not. Our families were worried. And after three hours, our neighbor fighting with them over, the, <laughs> over his house on the knob, the army finally came and neutralized them. And we were, you know, it, it wasn't over yet because they still had to go from house to house to clear. They were all over. And I heard the, the tanks outside my house and I opened the sheltered room door. Finally, it was about 7 p.m., something like that. The kids couldn't breathe anymore, so it was, you know, I would open it anyway because we would just choke to death. And I went outside, I saw the soldiers. They, first they saw me on, on the window, they thought I was a terrorist. They were all aiming their guns on me. And I was screaming, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay, I'm with you, I'm with you. So they told me that they uh, cleared my street. Now they're going to the next street and we should stay locked inside the, the protected room. So I told my kids, I'm sorry, we have to go back inside. Uh, we went back in and we still heard explosions, uh, assault rifles. We, we sat there until 2 a.m. when the army finally told us we can come outside. They told us you have five minutes to get everything you can. הבן שלך בן 12, הבת איזה? הבן שלי בן 12, הבת בת 8. איפה הם? הם פה עכשיו איתך? כן. הם לא איתי, הם פה. לא, אבל הם לומדים... כי שבוע שעבר היו פה מלא משחקים וכל זה, למה אין את זה יותר? אני חושב שזה לאט לאט מדלדל, אני חושב שבשבוע הראשון, בשבוע וחצי הראשונים, נתנו So the army told us we have five minutes to get everything we can. We just grabbed underwear, socks. My daughter grabbed her doll and we just ran outside. We didn't know we wouldn't be able to go back home anyway, anytime. So they took us outside uh, to an armored vehicle and we started driving in the kibbutz. We had no idea what was going on outside. So it was the first time after more than 20 hours, 22 hours that I don't know how many hours we, we saw cars, bodies everywhere. We, we don't know if, if it was soldiers, terrorists, we had no idea. There were just bodies everywhere. I told my children to look down so they wouldn't see those hours, but... Uh, we were rescued and we, they took us outside of the kibbutz where we started, you know, they, they were bringing more survivors and we were all asking, what about that? What about that guy? What about this elderly couple? What about those children? And, Nobody had any answers. Nobody. I don't know. I just got out. They just rescued me too. I have no idea. Nobody knew anything. And as hours went by, we heard about 
the children that were keep being kidnapped to Gaza with their mothers. We heard about the atrocities that happened in the youth neighborhood. What they did there, they brutalized young people, small children, young women with babies. They murdered them, they raped them, they brutalized them, they mutilated their corpses. We heard horrific stories and it's so hard to think about what those poor people did, had to go through in their last moments. You know, my, my daughter's friends, a friend is kidnapped in Gaza. They grew up together since they were, since they were born. My, my kids were, were raised in the kibbutz since they were born. So that's why we moved there five years ago, because my children was born there, raised there, and it's all they know. So a good friend, you know, my phone is fi is eight. His name eight is years old. yes. His name is Yuval Brodech. He's held in Gaza with his two siblings and mother, right now. And my phone is filled with their pictures. I every time I open the, my phone, I see the pictures, and you know, it's heartbreaking to see it. And you know, I try to stay strong for my children, for my wife, but I just see those pictures and I collapse and. They, they murdered entire families and, you know, I had to sit and explain to my daughter, listen, your friend is in Gaza, he will be back someday. And I had to tell her, her instructor, Omer Kharmesh, is her instructor in the, in the, the children, the, the children have this, uh, like, children home, okay, and he's an, an, an instructor there and there, there are, it's a love story between them. She loves him and he loves her and, I had to tell her he's missing. Now we know he's dead. They just told us yesterday. I still don't know how to tell her. I told her he's in Gaza, he will, he will be back. And now I have to change the story. I have to tell her his funeral is tomorrow. How old is he? He was around 40, 40 something like this. So I don't know how to tell her. I, I have no idea. How, how do you explain your kids? Her friends are dead, missing, kidnapped to Gaza. How do you tell your children horrific stories like that? You know, children should know about such atrocities. We thought this, will, this can never happen to us again. It happened 70 years ago. We thought it will never happen again. We always took the risk of the rockets. We know about it. I grew up inside it. I grew up in the road, so I know all about the rockets. It's a risk we, we have taken. But terrorists coming inside and doing the atrocities they did worse than Nazis. The Nazis had, the, the Nazi had, you know, the, the, the little human in them just to guess us, okay? They just guess people. They murdered babies, they beheaded babies. They raped f young women, 14 and 15, for hours. They tortured them. What kind of animals would do such thing? They are not humans. They burned alive elderly couple living just the next street from me. I've been to, the, to their house. It's an horrific scene. I've been to the kibbutz, I went to the houses, I've seen what happened. You've been back to the kibbutz yes. since you were yes. evacuated? Yes, I've been there twice. I went on specific missions to bring people uh, certain things. There's this elderly couple, they forgot the, the, the uh, his earring aids. So I went back to bring it to him. I went to bring some family albums to, to a family that lost their parents. They, they didn't have anything, so they, they want to, to grieve. So, you know, we have all these little missions to bring things with sentimental value or things people need. So if, they, if it survived, no, the, when I went to bring the albums, they told me in our parents' bedroom, we, the, there is a white shirt that means the word to us. Can you please go search it? And I'm with them on the phone and I walk into their parents' bedroom and there is nothing. I, you know, I, I never thought that when a house, uh, there is a fire, Things in God just turn into ash. There is nothing. There is no closet. There is no bed. There is nothing. Just floor, and everything is black. And I can't tell them on the phone. You know, they burned your 
parents' house. They burned them. I don't know if they burned them alive or not. I have, I, I, I can't know, but they burned them. And I can't tell them on the phone. They don't know. And I say, I can't find it. I can't find it. And I say, no, it's on the left side of the closet. And how can I, I can, can I tell those guys, you know, they're, they're my friends, they're my neighbors. How can I tell them they burned your parents' bedroom? They burned all your memories. You know, when people die, you want to go to the place they were living. You want to smell their clothes, to have that little moment with yourself. And there's just nothing. And the kibbutz itself, itself it just looks like a war zone. Like when, when you see all those videos on CNN of Ukraine, of those, you know, just Armageddon. The kibbutz is in ruins, and it was our small happy place, our safe haven. It was a, no, it was our heaven, the kibbutz. It was our place in the world, our piece of land. And it was also always so joyful and happy, and free, filled with kids and laughter. It's and the Hamas, those Nazis, they just picked a small civilian community, no soldiers, we, we, we are, we are peaceful people. They just came in and slaughtered entire families and elders and babies. In what name? Why? Is there anything else that you think it's important for the world to know? I think the world should know that the Hamas is the only responsible for what is happening right now, for everything, to the people of Israel, to the people of Gaza. They are using their women and children as human shields. They, have, they said they have 500 kilometers of tunnels under Gaza. I think it's time they, if they don't let their children and women leave Gaza, they should let them inside the tunnels to save their lives. They shouldn't blame us for anything that is happening. It's Hamas' fault. And the world should recognize that it, they are worse than ISIS and should be treated like such. The world stood still and, and fought ISIS and, and destroyed them. The world should destroy Hamas as well. No terrorist group should exist in our world. Thank you very much.